Today we have two categories of SpaceX news to go over. First we'll head to Boca Chica and check in on the status of Starship SN4, 5, and 6. Then we'll get hyped for next week's first manned Falcon mission to the heavens. And of course wrapping it all up with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. On Sunday afternoon, SpaceX made a third attempt at lighting SN4's new engine, but only made it as far as a pre-burner spin-up before calling it a day for unknown reasons. Then just a couple days later on Tuesday, they were successful in their attempts to static fire Raptor SN20. But it wasn't without problems. Shortly after boom time, everyone seemed to notice that she was on fire for like 15 minutes. And although Elon has not yet passed along a status update of the situation, it's pretty reasonable to assume that from all the black smoke, there was maybe a leaky methane pipe that caught some wiring insulation on fire. But perhaps the bigger issue that resulted from all of this was that some propellant may still have been trapped inside SN4. Boca Chica extended the road closures 24 hours, and it wasn't until Thursday morning that a drone was seen taking up close surveillance of the vessel. And then just a few hours later, the first crew members were spotted on site. And it now looks pretty clear that at least part of the insulation on the test stand got pretty toasty. Also, a couple heat shield tiles were like, screw this, I'm out. If all would have went according to plan, we could have expected to see a 150 meter hop this week. But since the fire, the notum that was posted by the FAA for the hop was pulled, and all testing this week has been canceled. It will resume on the 28th after the launch of Demo 2. And a new notice to airmen posted yesterday showing ground testing operations will run through the 5th. Depending on how fast SN4 can bounce back, it's a possibility SN5 could be taking on some of her load. As we pointed out last week, her propellant tanks are stacked and no stacking is imminent, which was spotted to possess what may very well be ACS thrusters. Meanwhile, SN6 is close behind. All of her tank sections have been spotted, but have yet to be stacked. Of course, all this is happening because Elon wants to colonize Mars. But in order to do that, first the planet must be terraformed. Russia says he'll have to nuke Mars's atmosphere with 10,000 missiles. Of course, the writer was doubtful, as if that's anything new. It's almost as if they didn't learn anything from laughing Elon out of the country back in the early 2000s. But Elon simply responded, 10,000 nukes? No problem, man. But the next major step is Demo 2, America's return of American astronauts to space on American rockets from American soil. And the Dragon capsule to take us there arrived at Launch Complex 39A this week, where it was promptly mated with its Falcon 9 booster and hauled out to the pad. It has since gone vertical in preparation for its static fire, which is supposed to happen today. The president said he may be attending the launch next week, and he floated a proposal I think every American can get behind. Uh, I'm thinking about going, uh, that'll be next week, to the rocket launch. I hope you're all gonna join me. I'd like to put you on the rocket and get rid of you for a while. Okay, thank you very much. Meanwhile, NASA's checking off the events leading up to the launch one by one. Earlier this week, Vice President Pence had a Skype meeting with NASA Administrator Jim and astronauts Bob and Doug for the National Space Council meeting. The two astronauts then took a quarantine flight from Houston to the Cape, where they said a few words to the press. Yesterday and today, NASA and SpaceX managers gathered for the flight readiness review for Demo 2, where they just gave the mission the go for launch, at least on paper. But wait, there's more. On Monday, there will be a pre-launch briefing, Tuesday, another briefing, and then Wednesday, we have the launch, of course, which you can join me live right here on my channel for, and eccentric members can also join me for the post-launch news conference. Thursday, the capsule will dock with the space station, and Friday, we'll have a conference with Bob and Doug from space. SpaceX has updated their website now, and it includes a human spaceflight page. So head on over to SpaceX.com and check it out. But you can also check out these NASA images of the SpaceX spacesuits featuring both the Worm logo and Meatball. Man, I gotta get me one of those suits. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. Okay, we're just gonna quickly debrief two missions that went to space this week. First, ULA's boosterless Atlas V rocket launched the Air Force's X-37B space plane on its sixth mission to orbit on Sunday. And boy, did that sucker slowly creep off the ground. Pretty cool to watch, actually. This mission was delayed after encountering weather issues the day before. The scheduled change with the range, along with Hurricane Arthur, was the reason the next Starlink launch was scrubbed until after Demo 2. And then yesterday, Japan launched its last HTV mission to the International Space Station as part of its contribution to the program. 
It carried a bunch of supplies from several different countries and agencies, including NASA, and this rocket did use some extra boosters, which is always lovely to look at when they jettison. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but before you go, I just wanna let you know that my upcoming documentary on parachutes and rocketry will be releasing early next week, just in time to catalyze your Demo 2 hype. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel, now's the time to do so. You know, I'm an extremely humble person, but even I have to tell you, it's quite the masterpiece. So raise them up to parachutes and let's jump in. Screw the Oscars. This thing deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. God, wouldn't you know it? I just finished rendering this video when I got on Twitter and I saw that a lot of you added me about this tweet SpaceX just put out. Parachutes! SpaceX has completed nearly 100 tests and flights of its Dragon parachute systems and in development for the upgraded Mark III design. One of the safest, most reliable parachute systems in the world for human spaceflight. Now I got more B-roll I need to splice into this documentary. Thank you eccentric members for your continuous love and support of the channel. If you'd like to do the same and maybe get some early access to this upcoming documentary, check out the link in the description below. Until the next time, Godspeed.